improvising and working free, but uh, as we've talked about, if Chris Hatcher has one weakness, it's throwing on the run, and that time just didn't get enough under it, and North Alabama comes up with a big, costly turnover. Cody Gross is under the center. We haven't seen Tyrone Rush touch the ball in several plays. Let's see if he gives it to him here. Rush is going to give it to Rush right up the middle. Uh, Gross is going to give it to Rush right up the middle. He's going to gain three yards on the play. And George Parsons is in on the stop. Tony Hill is in on the stop. Edward Mitchell, Shea Williams are there to knock down the third leading rusher in the Gulf South Conference. He's going to pick up three. It'll be second and seven. Balls on the far side hash mark at the 33-yard line. And the Blazers at 5.59 to go in the first half. Valdez State leading 14-7. to seven. Tyrone Rush is appropriately named, isn't he, Mike? <laughs> is he ever? His mom must have knew he was going to be a football player, and he is a great one. Cody Gross is under the center, looks around at Blazers. They rush four. Got an eye backfield behind him. This time he's going to pitch it deep to Rush. Rush looking for room, finding none. He's knocked down at the 29-yard line. They're going to be far short of the first down. Edward Mitchell, George Parsons in there, Shea Williams in there. For the Blazers, the Blazer D, the ombre defense of Mike Majors, and it's going to be third and five at the 30-yard line. Remember, this came about. They got the great field position as a result of Chris Hatcher's second interception of the game and his seventh intercept of the year. Of course, the guy's only thrown 34 touchdown passes, too. you got to throw that in every time you talk about intercepts. Five minutes to go in the half. Blazers lead 14-7. to seven. Big third down. Stop them play right here as the Blazers rush four. Here come the black shirts with the black hats. And they're motioning the crowd to get up and get with them here. And the D is really throwing it up. Here they come. Gross is going to keep it himself. Down the line. Pitches it to Rush. He dropped it on the ground. is able to come up with the football and Mike Gibson is going to come limping off the field for the Blazers are going to get it right back on the turnover. Yeah, great play there. Good pressure defense and that's what you got to have. You got to use your quickness. You got to use your strengths and that's where the Blazers can do it. They got great quickness. They get away with a blitz. They're a little outside stunt. They force Cody Gross, uh, Cody Gross to pitch it really before he's ready and with somebody hanging all over him and he makes a bad pitch and the Blazers get it right back. Here's Hatch in the gun. He threw the intercept. Now they fumble it. He's got it right back almost exactly the same position at the 32-yard line. Goes it over the middle. And another intercept. Another intercept at the 37-yard line. Threw it right into the arms of the D-back. And the man who picked it off was Gerald Clemens, the junior from Griffin, Georgia. And Hatch, just like that, turns it around again. His third interception of the evening. Yeah, he's a little disappointed there. And... Uh... But Hal Mummy picks him right up, pats him on the back, says, hey, it's okay. But uh, North Alabama, I tell you, for a team that's last in the Gulf South Conference in passing, coming in and pass defense, rather, uh, they are playing well. They are uh, really blanketing a lot of those Blazer receivers. Ball's at the 42-yard line of the Blazers, and just like that, the team's trading turnovers, 431 to go in the half, and the Blazers still lead 14 to 7. Cody Gross is getting behind him. Satterfield and Tyrone Rush. Long time with the snap count. Wants to use all that 25-second clock. He wants to throw the ball down the field. Got a man down there. Is he going to come back? No, he's not going to catch it, and they throw the flag. Throw the flag against Gibson. He was down there face-to-face, nose-to-nose with the intended pass catcher and then had the interference flag thrown against him down at the 18-yard line. Well, I think what they got, uh, they're going to get him because he didn't turn his head back to the football. He had good coverage running with him, but he never looked back for the football. He kept running, and I think that's what the, uh, what prompted the flag. Hal Bummy's over there, motioning his hand over his head, saying it was an uncatchable ball anyway. In that case, there should not have been an interference flag thrown, but they're going to throw the flag, and it's going to be a penalty against Valdosta State University from the, well, it's going to be from the, from the, uh, where the ball was at the line of scrimmage all the way to the 28-yard line. First and 10, ball's in the center of the field at the 28-yard line of the Blazers. 4.25 to go, and that's a costly penalty against the Ombre defense. Cody Gross with an eye backfield behind him, one man out wide to the left side, and it's Michael Edwards. Gross is under the center, just a sophomore, Blazers rush four. 
Gross is going to give it out right side this time, trying to spin, and he does across the 25 to the 24, and this time Quinn Woods, a slot back senior from Birmingham, is able to pick up a couple of yards. Tony Hill in on the tackle for Mike Major's on break defense. Call it second and seven at the 24-yard line of the Blazers, and the clock's running at four minutes. Mike Major, the Blazer defensive coordinator, doing a lot of shuffling with the defensive front. John Hanson, Emmanuel Johnson, uh, Mike Berry, and Andre Randall really rotating back and forth, trying to keep them fresh as much as possible. Gross looks like a full house backfield this time, not in the typical full house set, as John said earlier. He's going to give it again, same play, right side, 25, 20, 19, 18 yard line, and a flag at the end. And a flag at the end, could be a face mask or a late hit as the flag is down, and they're very, very close in their motion in face mask. I think that's what it's going to be against the Blazers, and it will be. So it'll be another North Alabama first down and two costly penalties on this drive. Yeah, it looks like they got Jason Jeff there. I don't think it's intentional, but uh, it'll probably be another five yards uh, added to the game. Uh, Quentin Woods picked up about six on the play, and he was a yard short of the first down, but they'll tackle on the face mask at the end of it, and that'll be a Lion first down inside Blazer. Well, it'll be inside the 15, maybe down at about the 12-yard line. The temperature definitely dropping at Cleveland Field. We knew it was going to come down, maybe into the 30s tonight, and you can tell it's dropped since kickoff at 7 o'clock. 3.37 to go in the half. 14 to 7 Blazers lead, but the Lions are threatening right now to punch one in. They're only, they're going to spot it right into the 13-yard line. Ball's on the far side hash mark. Looks for Gross to give it the rush if he can, maybe on one of those sweeps around the right side. He's going to give it the rush, but it's going to be right up the middle looking for room, and he scrambles, and he's diving, and he's crawling across the 10 to the 9-yard line. Edward Mitchell made the stop, and Tony Hill is there as well, but they're going to mark his forward progress right at the 10 yard line for North Alabama. He picked up four. It'll be second and six right at the 10 yard line with three minutes to play in the first half and the Blazers leading 14 to seven. They're facing the Brookwood Plaza end of the stadium if you're familiar with Cleveland Field. The left end of your radio dial. Cody Gross wearing that 15 on his back. Purple hat, purple britches. Got a gold stripe around each arm under the center. Going to go right and pitch it to Rush. Rush trying to get it to the outside, to the corner. Does get to the eight. And one of the Blazers, Edward Mitchell, slid right under the official and knocked him down over there. But Rush is going to get to the eight-yard line. They say the clock continues to run. He's going to be short of the first down by about three yards. That was two tremendous uh, plays athletically for both sides. Uh, Tyrone Rush catching a little quick option on the right side and just really used the speed to turn it around. But what about the play by Edward Mitchell? Really fought off a block and had the speed to get out there and, and, and just trip Tyrone Rush up. Well, I think he would have scored there. Here comes the crowd. Listen to that crowd in the background. Cheering on this Blazer D. Cody Gross is under the center. Got three men behind him in the Lion backfield. And this time he's going to go. Jason Jelks comes up. Shea Williams is there. John Henson is there, but Edward Mitchell is there. And also for the Blazers, well, let's see, Raz Harvey is there. They're going to come up with the football. Had his hat knocked off, did Edward Mitchell. They're going to be short of the first down. Again, they give it to Quentin Woods, but he's going to be short of the first down, and they're going to come on and try to kick the three and get back in this thing at 14 to 10. Now, they have a great field goal kicker. Jamie Stoddard's hit 9 out of 11 field goals this year. His long was a 47-yarder. This will be a 24-yard attempt. Stoddard lines it up, snaps a good one, kick is up, and it is low and good. Low just over just over the crossbar, and it's 14 to 10 with 68 seconds in the half. We'll take a 30-second local break. This is the Blazers Sports Network. This is John with Knives and Diamonds Go, and we mean go. It's time to lay away now for Christmas. We have a large selection of gold watches for just $1.99, and we also have a large group of solid gold charm bracelets starting for just $49.99. Also, a wide flex herringbone chain, 18 inches, and solid gold for just $39.99. No one beats our prices, quality, and selection. Located in Belt in the new Walmart shopping center, Lake Park, factory stores behind Hardy's in the pink building. That's a moral victory of sorts, holding him out of the end zone after the 
third interception of the game by Chris Hatcher. But John, that uh, that three hurts. It would have been a lot better, 14 to seven at halftime. Now they got a little bit old man mode. Maybe the Blazers can move it down the field in the final 68 ticks of the half. Yeah, I don't think there's any question. Uh, uh, Blazer defense got to feel real good about the, the last two or three series. Here's the kickoff by Stutter. Left footer puts it high in the air. Going to be taken by Blake Duncan at the 20. Slipped a bit to the 25. Gets across the 25 to the 29 yard line and. The man who, and what do we got? Maybe somebody down on the field. The man who came in and made the stop was Thomas Counts for the visitors from North Alabama. First and 10 Blazers, 62 seconds in the half, and one of the Lions is being helped off the field. So the Blazers are now sitting at their own 29-yard line. Balls on the far side hash mark. Uh, what do you do? You throw it down the field a couple of times? Are you conservative? What's your approach here, young John? Well, I, I think they'll... Uh, I think they're they'll probably you'll see Dominic Ross make a couple of carries if we move it up, but we've got three timeouts left, and I think you may see him try and, and go to a high-tech passing game. Steve Greer and Flash Flanders on the right side. Dominic Ross, long setback. Hatch looked like he busted play. He's going to dive across the 30 to the 32-yard line. Looked like he wanted to hand it off to Dominic, but then Dominic was not at home. He had already vacated the facility in to make the stop. For the visitors is O.J. Patrick, the senior defensive tackle with 45 seconds to play in the first half. And the Blazers leading 14 to 10. Tell you, you just don't see Chris Hatcher uh, with three interceptions and then a, a busted play there. That's just uh, uh, not Chris, Chris Hatcher-like. Hatcher now with 30 seconds in the half. North Alabama rushes four. He's going to give it off to Dominique. Right up the middle, he's going to be corralled as he crosses the 35-yard line. Maybe get to the 37. He's going to be three yards short of the first down. Will probably be the last play of the first half. And North Alabama is going to knock him down, and it's going to be 9, 8, 7. Do they try to line it up very quickly? Do they call timeout? He's looking over to... Hal Mummy and says, do you want a timeout? And Hal says, yes, we'll take uh, one, but it's too late. Now the first half is history. Blazers lead at halftime over the number one ranked team in the nation, 14 to 10. We'll be back on the Blazer Sports Network after this 60-second network break. This is the Blazer Sports Network. Prepare yourself for an extraordinary new rotisserie chicken, deeply marinated with herbs and spices, then slowly roasted till golden brown. Is it from... Gentlemen, the Department of Music at Valdosta State University is proud to present to you for your listening and viewing pleasure the Valdosta State University Blazer Brigade. Under the field leadership of drum major Jason Hillier, the Blazer Brigade opens tonight's show with the sounds of the immortal Duke Ellington and his big band hit Caravan.
Georgia, Darcy Watson. And last, but certainly not least, setting a record seven years in the Crazy Brigade. Once again, we want to thank Brian Layton from the Dual Section.
Michigan State over Northwestern, 31-29. Nebraska winner over Kansas, and Vandy knocks off Kentucky, 17-7. Couple of Gulf South Conference scores, Delta State over West Georgia, 27-7, and Henderson State over Livingston, 46-44. Second half coming your way right now. We'll take a 90-second local break. You're on the Blazer Sports Network. This is Bart Bosch. Oftentimes, people get the notion that the only way to get the best deal on a new vehicle is to drive hundreds of miles out of town. Now, at Bosch Holes Buick GMC Azuzu, we make this pledge to our customers. We will meet or beat any competitor's price for a new Oldsmobile Buick GMC truck or new Azuzu. Now you can be assured without trips to Jacksonville, Tallahassee, or wherever, you'll get the best deal at Bosch Holes Buick GMC Azuzu on any model, any day, any time. Bosch Holes Buick GMC Azuzu, North Valosta Road. This is John with Nigel Diamonds Go, and we mean go. It's time to lay away now for Christmas. We have a large selection of Go watches for just $1.99, and we also have a large group of solid Go charm bracelets starting for just $49.99. Also, a wide flex herringbone chain, 18 inches, and solid Go for just $39.99. No one beats our prices, quality, and selection. Located in Belt Austin, the new Walmart shopping center, Lake Park, factory stores behind Hardy's in the pink building. Hello, this is Carla Penny for the Framing Workshop. Do you have I'll Get Around To It framing? Most of us do. You know, those photographs, drawings by the kids, needlework you've been meaning to frame. This fall, why not bring them into the Framing Workshop and let us get to work on them? At the Framing Workshop, we specialize in framing all those I'll Get Around To It projects, and we do them up exquisitely. While you're in, see our great art-related gifts, but be sure to visit us soon at the Framing Workshop at Barclay Square. Mike Chasen back live at Cleveland Field on Saturday night and the temperature is dropping. The wind is picking up just a bit. 14 to 10, Valdosta stayed up at halftime and the teams are getting ready to come back out on the field on the second half. Before they do, we'll take a 60 second network break. This is the Blazer Sports Network. Tiller to kick off for the Blazers. He'll be kicking off to the right end of your radio dial, and Tyrone Rush is waiting back at the nine-yard line. Probably another little stubby kick here. Blazers lead 14 to 10. We're underway in the second half against the number one ranked team in the nation. Fair catch call for at the 32-yard line on the far side of the field, and the man who made the fair catch was Shane Smothers, the freshman quarterback from Jasper, Alabama. Now, last year, 365 days ago, it was this third quarter that really turned the football game around when North Alabama just ate up the clock. The Blazers barely smelled the pigskin in the third quarter. North Alabama took control in the second half and uh, wound up tying the football game at 24. Blazers led it 24 to 10 at halftime. Lead this one 14 to 10 at halftime. Cody Gross is going to be under the center. Got three men in the backfield behind him. All good running backs. He's got a motion man this time. First time we've seen a motion man. He's going to give it up to Satterfield across the 35 to the 37-yard line on the far side hash mark. Raz Harvey in there on the tackle. Andre Hampton is there. Edward Mitchell is going to help Satterfield up, and he's going to gain five on the play. It'll be second and five at the 37. Right away, North Alabama coming right back at you. Uh, full speed ahead. First play with a quick fullback hitter there, and the Blazers don't do a good job, and he picks up six yards. and. Uh, that's a, there again. We've got to stop the fullback. Looked like we started doing that in the second quarter, and that really forced North Alabama out of their game. Cody Gross is under the center again. Blazers have got four down linemen. Two more come. Six people come. They're going to cut off Gross at the 35, but he slips through to the 36. 
Clay Gibson is there to make the stop along with Shea Williams, but they had him cut off back at the 33, but he slid through there, slithered through, and got an extra yard. It's still gonna be third and six yards to go. Balls on the near side, hash mark, and the Blazer defense has really, really played well when he comes down that side on the option. Yeah, certainly have, and uh, uh, real quick, Mike, just a uh, first half, Statistics plays 192 total yards from North Alabama, only 122. Three men in the backfield behind Gross, 13.45 to go in the third quarter, and the Blazers leading 14 to 10. This is for the Gulf South Conference Championship. Gross is gonna roll right side, pitches it over to Satterfield, he catches it on the dead run at the 40, and he knocked out of bounds, and win airborne at the 45. Win airborne, Marcus Johnson knocked him high in the air, and he was just, looked like Superman looking down upon Cleveland Field there, but he gets the first down for the Lions despite the great hit by Marcus Johnson. Well, I tell you what, that's a deja vu. Last year, Tyrone Rush hurdled the same Marcus Johnson, one time on a very similar play, holding him around the right side and kept on running. That time, Marcus Johnson says, you hurt on me this time, I'm gonna hurt you, and he did. Uh, but the, the, the big thing is North Alabama picks up the first down. Balls at the 47 of the Lions. First and 10 for Cody Gross and company. 13.30 to go, and they're trailing 14 to 10. Gonna give it out right side, and it's Kenyatta Jones at the 50, 45, 40, and knocked out of bounds on the far side of the field, right in front of Bobby Wallace and the coaching staff of North Alabama. And over there, Tony Hill is there, Edward Mitchell is there, Jason Jokes is there, Andre Hampton is there to push him out of bounds. But a good run by Jones, and he's gonna pick up eight to nine yards on the play. It'll be second and one at the 43-yard line. They just keep the pressure on you, they really do. Uh, for the Blazers, we might add Ryan Branch is in the ballgame. George Parsons came out, looked like he's got a, a hurt shoulder, not real sure. And I see Jim Madalino rushing down to Parsons right now. Madalino resplendent in a red sweater and a white hat. It'll be second and one. Cody Gross under the center, Blazers rush four. Same three men in the backfield, 13-23 to go in the third quarter. Long snap count, pitches it deep to Rush. Rush across the 35, 45 to the 40 to the 37-yard line. It's just hard to stop it when he gets those legs to turn it. Jason Jokes, Edward Mitchell in there on the stop. It'll be another first down, and they've done it all on the ground. But hey, they're the lead rushing team in the nation. Folks, we expect them to do it on the ground. Certainly do. Just got to, uh, as we talked about, they just, uh, they're like a record on 78. It's just a little faster, a little, little tougher than uh, Anything you've seen before. First and 10 at the Blazers, 37 yard line. Balls on the far side, hash mark. They're trying to punch it in the end zone at the left end of your radio dial. 12.58 to go in the quarter. The Blazers leading 14 to 10. Here's Gross on the reverse, and he's got it coming around at the 40. 35, 30, 25, 20, 15, 10. Cuts back, five, knocked out of bounds at the three yard line. And a Raz Harvey came over there and knocked him out of bounds. And the reverse works to perfection. Demetrius Shelton, the freshman from Jasper, Alabama, the wide receiver. First time we've seen the reverse in the football game, and that's a great call by Bobby Wallace. And there's a player down on the field on the far side, and it's gonna be one of the black shirts of Valdosta State, and they're gonna to attend to him over there. While they do, we're gonna take a 30-second local break. This is the Blazers Sports Network. Unless you're a travel professional, you can't always know all there is to know about airfares, seasonal rates, package tours, and other details behind a successful trip. That's why you should see the travel professionals at South Georgia Travel. South Georgia Travel has served the travel needs of our area since 1964, and we're dedicated to offering the quality travel services you deserve. Call 244-2324 or stop by our offices on Bay Tree Road. It'll be our pleasure to serve you. It's one of the tall, thin ones. <laughs> Not that that helped. Here we go. Back in uh, a chance here for the Blazers. We're trying to decipher who it is. Now he's getting helped up, and it's going to be Tony Hill. It's going to be Tony Hill, who is still woozy as he comes off the field. Jim madaluno has got that left arm on him, and he is really supporting him. Howell Bummy walked all the way across the field, concerned about Tony Hill, and I don't blame him. He was laying flat out on the turf of Cleveland Field. He's still walking a little unsteadily there, John. Yeah, looked like he just got his bell rung there, but a great play by uh, North Alabama there. Take, it, take advantage of uh, the Blazers' great pursuit toward the ball. That time they start that lead option to the left, and this time just pitched it out to Demetrius Shelton coming back around on a flanker reversed, and he had nothing but running room, and uh, 
Showed us some great speed, a big play for North Alabama. First and goal at the four yard line. Laser fans rise to their feet as one. Gonna go left side to Satterfield. Satterfield's gonna try to crash in, but he will not get there. He'll be stopped at the one yard line. And the Blazers are gonna knock him down there. It'll be second and goal at the one. In on the stop is Keith Braddock, the junior free safety who came in to replace Tony Hill. Now checking into the Blazer lineup in that goal line D is Emmanuel Johnson. Made a couple of tackles last week, the junior from Memphis, Tennessee. Yeah, this Blazer coaching staff very high on Emmanuel Johnson. He's just just now playing himself into shape, and I think he's going to be a big asset to this Blazer team in the future. Cody Gross looks around, and he wants to make sure Satterfield and Tyrone Rush are back there, and he goes straight ahead himself and takes it in. One-yard touchdown plunge by the sophomore quarterback in North Alabama has taken the lead for the first time in the football game. And it's 12.03 to play. The one-yard touchdown plunge by Cody Gross and 16 on the board for the visiting Lions and 14 for the Blazers. And now on for the extra point for the Florence Alabama team is Jamie Stoddard. And Stoddard is going to have it held down there. Here's the snap. It's a good one. The kick is up, and it is good. North Alabama 17, Blazers 14 will take a 60-second network break. This is the Blazers Sports Network. Hi, uh, sir, you can't come in the studio. It's all right. I'm Dave's cousin Ed. I'm filling in. But the script says days. It's just an oversight. You sure? <laughs> Trust me. OK. Uh, Wendy's, take one. Hi, this is Dave Thomas's cousin Ed. Let's cut through it. With Wendy's 99 cent super value menu, you can put together a feast for next to nothing. For example, you take a bowl of chili and a baked potato, Caesar side salad, and a piggy drink. At 99 cents each every day, you get a great meal for Diddley. <laughs> My brother-in-law, Bill, well, he lives off the super value menu. Of course, he's tired than a rusted nut. Well, well, excuse might've... me, Cousin Ed, that's not in my script. It's called ad-libbing. They will love it. <laughs> for the kids, there's Wendy's $1.99 hamburger kids meal, including a toy. So get on down to participating Wendy's. Oh, here comes Cousin Dave. Gotta go. <laughs> oh, hi, Dave. How you doing? Okay, but I could swear I just saw Cousin Ed. Enjoy one of the delicious items on Wendy's 99-cent super value menu, available at Wendy's in Valdosta. Here's the kickoff by North Alabama. A short high kick going to be taken by Calvin Walker at the 16 to the 20. Tries to come across the field and knock down at the 21. They have a good kick return team. And the man who brought him down was Gerald Smith, the cornerback for Bobby Wallace's Lions, ranked number one in the nation and leading the Blazers now 17-14. John, it was a workmanlike drive that saw no passing at all, completely on the ground. Of course, the big play was the reverse. Yeah, certainly was, and uh, uh, it's, uh, uh, you know, I mean, it, it, it shows, North, shows you what North Alabama's made of. Uh, they're down, and uh, they're not out. They come right back and take charge. Hatch is under the center. Got Greer in motion to the visitor side. Going to give it to the fullback, Dominic Ross, across the 35. To the, to the 35-yard line, across the 25, to the 30, to the 35. And Ross with a big run, 14 yards on the play by a sophomore from Jacksonville. It'll be a first down, Blazers. Balls at the near side hash mark. The Blazers headed to the right end of your radio dial, dressed all in black. Mike Dominic Ross, 10 carries for 62 yards in the first half. and. Uh, there's 14 yards in, so he's up to uh, 76 yards on the night. At 160 last week, named the Gulf South Conference Offensive Player of the Week, set the all-time Blazers single-game rushing record earlier this year against Ford Valley State. Hatch is in the gun. Looking out right side, batted down at the line of scrimmage by one of the on-rushing defensive linemen. Got a big hand on it there, and that was Jeff Redcross, the defensive end, the senior from Huntsville, just knocked it down with a big left hand. Yeah, good play by Red Cross because it looked like uh, Blazers had a play developing here. Again, a little quick swing pass here to Blake Duncan and looked like he had some, some room in front of him. Spot the ball at the 34 and a half yard line, near side hash mark. Blazers right now 65 and a half yards away from touchdown country. Got two wideouts outs on the right, two wideouts outs on the left. Now motion man is Pinder to the home side. He's got Blake Duncan on his left, hatches in the shotgun, punts once. Rolls left, throws a blue garner over the middle at the 42-yard line, caught and fumbled by Greer at midfield. Caught by Greer at the 45 and fumbled forward to midfield and going to be picked up there by the guys in the white shirts. And the man who recovered the fumble was Keith Humphrey, the sophomore linebacker from Huntsville, Alabama. It'll be North Alabama football, and it's the fourth turnover of the night for VSU. Yeah, things not going the way you have to have it tonight. Uh, we talked about the Blazers can't afford to make mistakes on offense. 
and give this North Alabama offense the ball back, and that's just what happens. Chris Hatcher with three interceptions, and there we see the fumble by Griff. Uh, good job by Steve Griff fighting for extra yards, but uh, the ball pops loose, and North Alabama's back in business. So the Blazers hold the ball less than a minute, and right now North Alabama has it back 50 yards from glory land. Straight up the middle goes Satterfield. He'll take it to the 45-yard line. Edward Mitchell and, let's see, Andre Hampton in there on the stop for Mike Major's VSU defense. This is the kind of game that North Alabama loves, folks. They love to take advantage of the other team's turnovers. They like to get the ball in good field position. They like to stay on the ground. They're doing everything they like. The Blazers have to upset those plans right now. 10.53 to go in the third quarter. Blazers trailing 17-14. Tony, Tony Hill is back in the ball game. Good news. Good news right there as Hill is back playing that safety spot. Got a motion man to this side. It's Kenyatta Jones. Going to hand off to Satterfield again across the 43 to the 42. He's going to be a couple of yards short of the first down. It'll be third and two at the 42-yard line of the Blazers. Again, yeah, good job by that North Alabama offensive line. As we told you, they love to run behind number 78, right guard Jeff Serbaugh, 6'4", 275, a senior. And uh, as we said, they'll move him around to the left side occasionally, too, to, to take advantage of uh, this great blocking ability. And the Blazer players turn it around and point at the crowd, said, let's get up and stop him on this third and two. Here's Cody Gross under the center. Got Jones in motion to the home side. He's going to keep it himself. Tries to go along the corner. He's going to flip it deep. And Rush is going to catch it and be hit by Edward Mitchell. Rush is going to be hit by Edward Mitchell and knocked back to midfield. What a big play. And Harold Mummy on the sideline with both fists in the air. And you hear this crowd in the background and the defensive play of the game by Edward Mitchell. A uh, great play there. Again, lead option to the right. But I think what the key there, Cody Gross looked like he had running room, but he pitched it. Mike, I'm wondering if a couple of those vicious hits by Tony Hill doesn't have Cody Gross thinking, I'm going to pitch it instead of running. I think you're exactly right. Lee Morris is on the punt and away, and a nice low punt. Going to bounce once and take a North Alabama roll, and it's going to roll and roll and roll all the way down to the five, maybe the four-yard line. What a roll that time for the Lions. It'll be first and 10, 96 yards away from going ahead in this football game. Great play by that Blazer defense. But North Alabama would have liked nothing better than to knock out a few first downs and start grinding on you. But this Blazer defense rises up and makes a key third down play. Credit Edward Mitchell there with a tremendous play stopping Tyrone Rush. Of the Blazers, four turnovers, only one, John, has resulted in a score. Or is it two? Yeah, one got the field goal and another got, the, got a touchdown. That's right. No, that's right, only just, one. Just the field goal. Just the right. field goal, that's right. Two touchdowns, they drove it down the field. Here's Hatch under the center. Motion man is Flash Flanders to the visitor's side. Hatch is going to roll left, and now he's going to throw it to Calvin Walker at the 15 to the 20, and Walker's going to get across the 20 to the 23-yard line. And over there on the stop for the visitors that time is Robert Haynes, the junior D-back from Nettleton, Mississippi. The play picks up seven yards. It'll be second and three. Ball's on the far side. Hash mark the clock running at 8.55 in the third quarter, and the Blazers trail 17 to 14. How about that, Mike? That's Calvin Walker's first catch of the night. That's Did not shot. catch a pass in the first half. Last year, uh, six catches, 101 yards against North Alabama. He just broke his own record for most receptions in a season with 72. Hatches under the center. Steve Greer, the motion man, to the visitor's side. Going to give it off to Dominique. Left side, crashing for the first down across the 25 to the 28, maybe to the 29-yard line. In there on the stop for North Alabama that time is Ronald McKinnon, the sophomore linebacker. It'll be a first down blazer. Again, a good job by the left side of that blazer line. York Kerensky, Matt Moore, really sealing that left side off, allowing... Dominic Ross to pick his hole there and just slash it up in there for five, six, seven yards. Ball's on the far side, hash mark. Blazers are going to bring them up here. After the Blazer D held on that last one after the fumble, got to march it down the field, give these defensive troops some support. Going to motion Dominic Ross back in the eye right behind him. Hatches under the center. Going to give off the Ross. Ross looking for a hole on the right tackle. He finds one four or five yards up to the 34-yard line. And that will bring up a second down and about six yards to go. In on the stop for North Alabama again is Ronald McKinnon. Good running by uh, Dominique tonight should be approaching that 100-yard mark, somewhere in there, John. Yeah, he should be close. I think he's got uh, around 90 yards at this point unofficially. 
Dominic with 160. Uh, check that, Dominic with 160 last week. 7:42 to play in the third quarter, and the Blazers trail 17-14 to the number one team in the nation. Sean Pender in motion to the visitor side. Hatches in the gun. Three-step drop, looking down the field. Got a man there, right in the middle of the defense, right in the teeth of the defense. And Hatch, with no fear, just threw it right into the teeth of the defense. Calvin Walker is waiting for the pass at the Lions' 47-yard line. First down, VSU. That may be his most important pass of the night. As you said, he really stepped in there and fired it. He really threaded the needle there. Calvin Walker was not wide open, lined up on the left side, went about 18 yards on a little curl route. Chris Hatcher zipped it in there between the linebackers. That's the kind of throw he needs to get his confidence back. Remember, this drive started at the Blazers' four-yard line. Steve Greer in motion to the visitor's side. Hatch is going to give it off to his sophomore fullback, and Dominique is going to burrow to the 45-yard line of North Alabama. Picks up three on the play. It'll be second and seven at the 45, and the ball's on the far side hash mark. Here comes Robert Williams, the bean bowl, into the football game, and Flash Flanders is going to check out. 6.45 to go in the third quarter, and the Blazers trail 17-14 to 14 to the number one team in the nation. Biggest crowd of the year, easy, in Cleveland Field, probably somewhere around 9, 10,000, maybe 11. Who knows? Good crowd on hand and support. The Blazers of Hal Mummy, ranked, seven, ranked 18th in the nation. Motion man to this side is Robert Williams, the bean pole. Hatch is going to fake the run to Dominique, looking for Beanpole. He's going to throw to his short man, Greer, at the 40-yard line. Steve Greer's going to be two yards short of the first down. Coming over there to make the tackle is Gerald Clemens, the junior D-back from Griffin. But Greer, that's an important catch for him after fumbling the last time he caught it. And you never see Steve Greer fumble. That's perhaps the first time all season that I've seen him fumble, but he got hit really hard, and the Hellman must have hit the ball that was tucked right under his arm there and caused it to squirt forward. But that one was a big catch for Greer. It'll be third and a long two right at the 40 and a half yard line with 5.55 to go in the third quarter. The Blazers trailing 17 to 14. This is a big play here. Blazers need to get, the, to get that uh, first down. We don't want to be stuck with a fourth and short here. Hatch is under the center. Got Dominique Ross behind him. Going to go up to Ross. Sliding off that left tackle. Gets across the 40 to maybe the 38 right at the first down marker. He's right at the first down marker, and it depends on what kind of spot he gets. Kerensky says first down. Kerensky, the big lineman for the Blazers, said that's a first down, coach, and he looks over there, and they start the clock again, and the guys in the stripes are going to say that it is not a first down. It's short, but let's see. What are we going to do? We're going to go for I think Chris Hatcher is going to want a measurement. He can ask for a measurement if he wants one. And he's asking for the 25-second clock is running, so uh, he's asking for one, see. but he's not getting one. Let's call, uh, we, I think we ought to take a timeout here, but uh, we're not going to do it. Hatch is going to be under the center. Five seconds on the 25-second clock. He's going to go to Dominique. First down, Blazers. First down, Blazers. Listen to that crowd. Listen to that crowd in the background. I tell you, they're pumped up at Cleveland Field on Saturday night. Dominique Ross, the play was not entirely uh, in mind as to what they were going to do. I knew what to do. Hey, I didn't mean to be a coach in here, but I didn't like the confusion down there. Uh, you want 11 people going in the same direction when you got a fourth and one. Absolutely. Hatch is in the gun on first and 10 at the 35-yard line of North Alabama. Looking down the field, throws to his short man, Blake Duncan, at the 38. He's going to slide forward to the 34-yard line. Got his legs clipped out from under him that time by Jeff Redcross, the senior defensive end from Huntsville. He's still going to pick up two yards on the play. It'll be second and eight at the 34-yard line of the Lions of North Alabama. And it's been the Blazers who have controlled the football here in the third quarter, not the Lions of Bobby Wallace. I tell you, I am impressed with North Alabama and the secondary and the coverage. They are really uh, doing a great job of getting in the throwing zones and uh, preventing Chris Hatcher from looking downfield. Hatch is under the center this time. The motion man is Steve Greer to the visitor's side of the field. Going to give it up to Dominique, trying to skirt the left end, gets to the 30, maybe the 29, maybe the 28. And over there on the stop for North Alabama is Gerald Clemens, the junior D-back. And the clock's running at 345. It's going to be short of the first down by four yards. Another third down play on this long time consuming drive. The Blazers started at their own four yard line and have moved it to the North Alabama. They're going to set it down right at the 29 on the far side hash mark, headed to that goal line at the right end of your radio dial. Picture it in your mind, the turf of Cleveland Field getting, getting a little brown and black right out here in the middle of the field. These, these two heavyweights just slugging it out on a Saturday night for the Gulf South Conference Championship. 
catches under the center, audibilizes at the line of scrimmage. He's going to give it out left side to Dominique, trying to get around the end. He bangs heads with a lion, but he's going to dive across the 25 and get the first down. He's going to get the first down right at the 25, and now they're trying to unscramble it. Where do they say his knee touched? It's going to be close, Mike. Uh, it's right on it. I think he may be, sh they may even say he's short. Uh, it looked like he got it from here, but uh, it's all the way across the field. I think they're going to have to measure. They're right at the sticks, and they're going to bring the chain gang about five feet out onto the field and measure, and the m many of the crowd on their feet looking over there, and Hatch says it's going to be first down Blazers! First down Blazers! Hatcher was the first man to motion to the sideline and say that the guys in the black shirts had the first down. Exactly three minutes to play in the quarter. This, this could be the crucial, the pivotal play, the pivotal drive of a football game. Trailing 17 to 14, hoping to get something out of a long, long third quarter drive. Hatches in the gun, Blake Duncan on his right, and he's got Sean Pender on his left. Flash Flanders on the right side, look for Flash in the end zone. Here's Hatch over the middle instead. He's got Steve Greer at the 18. Steve Greer picks up seven yards on the play. He hit him on that left hash mark, and in there to make the stop for North Alabama is Ronald McKinnon. Boy, I tell you what, Steve Greer, we see him catch so many passes over the middle, but uh, he's taken some vicious hits in there. That time, number 42, as you said, McKinnon, Ronald McKinnon, uh, excuse me, number 44, Ronald McKinnon, and number 42, Keith Humphreys, really sandwiched Greer in there. Tough hit. And Hatch is under the center on a second and short yardage situation. Dominique Ross, the lone setback. Hatch is going to give it out to Dominique. He's going to crash off the left tackle. Uh, going to be very close to the first down. Does he get it? It's at the it's at the 15, I think. Two minutes and the clock is stopped in the third quarter. Let's see where they put the football. It's going to be just short, I believe. I think they're going to measure, Mike. Hatch looks over and tells Hal Mummy they're going to be just inches short here. And they're going to bring out the sticks anyway. Now Hatch comes all the way across. Mummy's five steps out onto the field, talking to his junior quarterback. Hatch is going to look down the line. And they're going to say, first down Blazers. First down Blazers again. And boy, we've had some squeakies. We've had some squeakies here that were just by inches. And that one's going to be another VSU first down with exactly two minutes to play in the quarter. And so far, the Blazers have moved it from their own four-yard line to the North Alabama 15. Oh, my, what a drive here, the drive. It'll be known in Blazer history as the drive. In the 12th year of play in college football, the Valdosta State University Blazers hoping to upset the number one ranked team in the nation. Here's Hatch under the center. Going to go right side to Dominique. Cuts back across the middle, but got hit after he got three yards on the play. Takes it down nearly to the 10-yard line, might maybe to the 11-yard line. 90 seconds to play in the quarter. In there on the stop that time, Ronald McKinnon. We call his name a lot, but he's always around the football. They have some great football players. 80 seconds in the quarter, and the Blazers are going to come up with a second and six just outside the 10-yard line. This may be the most time-consuming drive in, in, in Hal Mummy's uh, tenure here as a Blazer football coach. Uh, not used to really grinding this thing out. Uh, our run-to-pass ratio is really heavy, heavily favored to the run on this drive, and that's unusual. Blazers in a very tight formation. Got the Bobsy twins on the left side. Hatch is looking to throw. Looking, looking, looking. Now he's got to run out of there. Hatch is at the 10. Now he's going to throw a touchdown! Valdosta State University! He ran out of a big, big scramble back at the 15-yard line. And then Calvin Walker is waiting for the football at the rear of the end zone. Touchdown, VSU! Calvin Walker comes through again. What a combination as Hatch throws his third touchdown of the evening, and the Blazers lead it 20 to 17 over the number one ranked team in the nation. Here's Laurie for the extra point. It is up and it is good. Blazers 21, North Alabama 17. We'll take a 30 second local break. This is the Blazers Sports Network. This is Bart Bosch. Oftentimes, people get the notion that the only way to get the best deal on a new vehicle is to drive hundreds of miles out of town. Now, at Bosch Old Buick, anytime. Bosch Old Buick, GMC, Isuzu, North Valdosta Road. And this is the most fired up I've ever seen a Valdosta State University football crowd as their Blazers leading 
North Alabama, the Lions ranked number one in the nation. Listen to him. Listen to him in the background. Oh, my. This is college football right here. This is college football on a Saturday night in Valdosta, Georgia, home of the Blazers. I'll tell you what, it's, uh, it's great to see the crowd, but uh, right now let's think ahead. It would be so nice to get a stop right here, get that ball back. Uh, you, you still got to make the plays on defense. We can't let North Alabama take it, regain momentum by just knocking out five and six yards. So uh, let's call on that hombre defense to rise up and make a play. Jerry Dillard with the kickoff. Tyrone Rush standing back at his own eight. Dillard's been kicking it short, so he won't get it. And he does it again. It's going to be a fair catch call for at the 30-yard line. And this time, the man who made the fair catch was Shane Smothers. Second time he's done it tonight, the freshman quarterback. In fact, he kicked it about the same place from Jasper, Alabama. So the Lions have 50 seconds in the third quarter to try to retaliate. And boy, I tell you, you talk about your big fights, and you talk about a holy field, and you talk about Riddick Bowe, and you talk about heavyweights, and you talk about two of the best teams in NCAA Division II in the nation right here on this field in Valdosta, Georgia. 21-17 Blazers. North Alabama with the football, and the crowd has definitely been a factor in cheering on the black shirts of Hal Lovey. Going to pitch it deep to Rush. Rush looking for room, finds it, hurdles across the 40 to the 43-yard line. And oh, oh, did it cause your heart to skip a beat there. As you just saw Tyrone Rush, like Nehemiah, Skeets Nehemiah or somebody, just hurdling Blazers left and right, and he gets 12 yards on the block. How does he find a seam in there? I tell you, he's got eight, nine men packed in there. He just squares his shoulders up on the pitch sweep and just hits that third and fourth gear, and boom, he's gone. And, uh, I don't know who made the tackle there, but uh, just barely tripped him up enough or he was headed to pay dirt. 21-17, Blazers lead. 25 seconds in the third quarter. Motion man to this side of the field. Cody Gross is under the center. Blazers fake the blitz, and now they're going to give it to Satterfield across midfield to the 47-yard line of the Blazers. And Tony Hill has to come in there and drag him down from behind, and that's going to be close to another first down with 13 seconds to go in the third quarter of the football game and they stopped the clock while they moved the chains it will be a first down at the 47 and they're going to run it it should be the last play of the half i don't think they'll even get it off or will they seven seconds to go five four and he's going to bring them up as the third quarter winds down he will not third quarter's history blazers lead 21 17 we'll take a 90 second network break this is the blazers sports network chicken deeply marinated with herbs and spices then slowly roasted till golden brown is it from kfc indeed the legendary long lost recipe only at kfc taste it and believe the new colonel's rotisserie gold at kfc we do chicken right available only at participating kfc restaurants play of the fourth quarter tyrone rush goes straight ahead and bangs into the belly of tony hill and knocks him back a couple of steps and gains five yards on the play it'll be second and five at the blazers 41 yard line the ball's near the center of the field and clocks running down and right now the blazers hope to hold the lions out of the end zone the number one ranked team in the nation trailing 21 to 17 in the black shirts the ombre defense of mike majors hoping to make a stiff defensive stand right here got a motion man to the home side cody gross is under the center he's going to pitch it to tyrone rush looking for room on the left side he's going to find it to the 36 yard line it should be enough for another north alabama first down 
Boy, I tell you what, it, uh, they're at the break. I stepped over talking to some of the Blazer coaches up here in the box, and they just shake their head. He said, you know, John Conisett says, Tyrone Rush has got a gear we haven't seen before. And I think I'd have to agree. He really just, uh, I haven't seen anybody with the speed that, that just takes the handoff, and he's like he's going at full speed. Crowd officially announced at 9,148, the second largest crowd in Valdosta State football history. It is a lion first down at the 36. Cody Gross is under the center. His back mate, in backfield mate fell down, and we got a flag down, got a face mask in Shea Williams. The Cody Gross saw his backfield partner fall down, so he scrambled out of there. Shea Williams reaches out and pulls him down, but it's going to be a face mask call against the Blazers. Boy, nobody is disappointed about it as Shea Williams uh, just totally inadvertent, didn't mean to. But I tell you, a big break for North Alabama. We had them thrown for a three-yard loss, and they're going to get a, a five-yard penalty and make it first down and five. Talking about Tyrone Rush, all you got to do is look down. Uh, he comes from Philadelphia, Mississippi. Uh, there was another guy from Philadelphia, Mississippi, a guy by the name of Marcus Dupree. Uh, if you remember him, probably the most widely recruited high school athlete since Herschel Walker, or after Herschel Walker, went on to uh, play at Oklahoma and then played in the pros for a couple of, year, couple of years before he hurt his knee. 13-32 to go in the football game. Blazers lead 21-17. Gross is going to pitch it deep to Rush. He jumps over people and takes it to the 32-yard line, but not much going there as the Blazers, Shea Williams, again, in on the stop. Marcus Dupree was talked about long, hard, and often in Barry Switzer's book, and he says he's the most talented football player he's ever seen, but he could never live up to his potential. Well, bad news again, you see George Parsons coming off. I think he's got a stinger on his right neck there. It's just uh, where you make a hit there, and you just get a numbing steam sensation down your right arm, uh, and it's just... Uh, a frustrating injury because you have to come out and sit out for a couple of plays and let it go away before you can get back in there. Second and six for North Alabama at the Blazers 32. On the near side, hash mark headed to the right end of your radio dial. He gives it to Satterfield across the 30 to the 29-yard line. Ryan Branch is in on the stop, the freshman from Tifton, and also other Blazers down there. We got a whole pile of John Henson is there. Edward Mitchell is there. Raz Harvey is there. To stop Satterfield, it'll be a third and five, and now, let's see, we got the official's timeout down on the field. Yeah, it looks like one of the Blazer players got an equipment problem there. Let's see, it looks like Shea Williams. Now he's getting his hat straightened on as he'll put it back on his head. And the Blazers leading by a razor-thin four-point margin. North Alabama driving the football down the field, 12-22 and counting in the game of the year, the game of the century for VSU. And how Mummy's raising both arms down on the field and getting this crowd to exhort this defense. Cody Gross is under the center. Got three backs in the backfield behind him. Gross is going to take a long snap count. Now he's going to give it first man through center field. Flashes across the 27 to the 28, but Raz Harvey stops him short of the first down, and it'll bring up a fourth down play in decision time for Bobby Wallace. You're exactly right. Let's see the decision they make. I think they're, uh, they don't take long. They send another running back on this field, and they're going to go for it. Uh, Cody Gross is now asking if Bobby Wallace, does he want to call time, but no. They're not going, to be, not going to be a time. He gets the signal. They're going for it. Both teams still have their three timeouts of the second half left. And listen to this crowd. Listen to this crowd. 9,148, and they're really getting into it. Here's Cody Gross on fourth down and two. He's going to give it to Rush, and Rush is going to jump over two players and take it to the 26. He's going to be right at the marker. He's going to be right at the marker. And in there on the stop for Valdosta State University was Mike Berry. What's it going to be? Players from both teams are on that far side hash mark right at their marker. They may have to bring out the sticks. Usually you see one team saying, yeah, we got it, or no, we didn't get it. Uh, both teams just sitting there staring. This one must be very close. While they measure, we'll take a 30-second local break. This is the Blazers Sports Network. This is John with Nigel Diamonds Go, and we mean go. It's time to lay away now for Christmas. We have a large selection of Go watches for just $1.99, and we also have a large group of solid Go charm bracelets starting for just $49.99. Also, a wide flex herringbone chain, 18 inches, and solid Go for just $39.99. No one beats our prices. 
quality and selection. Located in Belt Austin, the new Walmart shopping center, Lake Park, factory stores behind Hardy's in the Pink Building. It is a North Alabama first down at the Blazers 26 yard line. Here's Cody Gross, gonna give it up to Rush, right up the middle, still on his feet, 15, 10, five, touchdown, Tyrone Rush. And North Alabama has taken the lead back from Valdosta State on the 26 yard touchdown run by the third leading rusher in the Gulf South Conference. Well, he just keeps hammering in there until he just chisels something away, finds a crack, and uh, I tell you, on that run there, he broke two tackles but, uh, to get into the end zone, but uh, this team's number one in the country, and they're not there by accident. Jamie Stoddard for the kick. Demetria Shelton with the hold. It is up, and it is good. 10.49 to play in a football game. Your score, North Alabama 24, the Blazers 21. We'll take a 60-second network break. This is the Blazers Sports Network. You'll find them in communities throughout the nation. People in all walks of life, working in all types of jobs, doing what they can to get ahead. And while the scenery may change from small town to big city, these people have all the borrowing advantages of a major financial center because they live in one of the communities served by Nations Bank, giving Bob Todd in Abbeville, South Carolina, all the loan options he might find in New York providing families like the Haley's in Annapolis, Maryland, the latest in home improvement in auto financing. And with loans exceeding $23 billion in just the last year, Nations Bank has helped nearly 3 million people like you reach their dreams. So whether you live in Fort Worth, Texas, Fort Myers, Florida, or any of the 1,900 other communities throughout our nation, finding the right loan can be as easy as talking with the people at Nations Bank, the loan source. Equal housing lender, credit subject to approval. A very high kickoff taken at the 20 by Reggie Walker. He's going to get to the 25 and get smothered right at the 25-yard line by the white shirts of North Alabama. The man who made the stop was Nate George, sophomore linebacker from Colquitt, Georgia, over in Miller County. They play some good football over that way, the Miller County High School team. I'll tell you one thing we haven't talked about tonight uh, that this Blazer coaching staff told me earlier. Uh, great special teams play by North Alabama, and we've seen that on their kickoff coverage team tonight. They're not kicking it deep, uh, but they are really flying down to the football, coming down the field, just reckless abandon. Blazers right now hoping to get that lead back. 10.44 to play in the football game. Hatch is under the center, going to give it up to Dominic Rossi. Cuts back to his right side and takes it to the 27-yard line. He's going to pick up three on the play. It'll be second and seven at the Blazers' own 27. In the man who made the stop for North Alabama that time was Israel Raybon, the sophomore defensive end from Huntsville. They have a lot of players from Huntsville, Alabama. Clock's running at 10.23, and the Blazers down by three points. Dominic Ross, not sure what he has, but he's got to be over 100 yards at this point. Hatch is going to be under the center. He's got Blake Duncan, his lone setback. He's got two wideouts on the right side. That's Steve Greer and Robert Williams. Two on the left side, the Bobsy twins, Calvin Walker and Flash Flanders. Going to go to Blake Duncan right up the middle at the 30, to the 32, to the 33-yard line, and pull down right at the 33. Still two yards short of the first down. Making the stop for North Alabama is Ronald McKinnon. 24-21. These two teams both have Gulf South Conference contests next week, but all eyes in the Gulf South focused upon this game tonight between the number one and number two teams in the league. North Alabama comes in 8-0 overall, 5-0 in the league. Valdosta State 7-2 overall, 4-1 in the Gulf South. Hatch on third and a yard. And we got a jump off sides by North Alabama. They got back. He goes right side to Dominique, and he does not get the first down. He does not get the first down. A great defensive stop on the far side of the field by the defensive end, and that was O.J. Patrick. And he's going to pull Dominique down just a foot short of the first down. It'll be fourth and a foot. And looked like, John, they jumped that time, but they must have gotten back. Yeah, defense, they moved, but, uh, but, but clearly got back. Uh, this brings up a big decision here. What do you do? 9-12 remaining. If you don't make the first down, looks like they're going to be short. I think Hal Mummy's got to go for it, even backed up here on his 34-yard line, because you punt it away and give it back to them, you may never see the ball again. 
And you say, what? Use up nine minutes? Yes, folks, we've seen them do it. We saw them do it last year, and they get three, four, they get six, they get a first down, and Kerensky says, no, we want to go for it, but he's going to come off the field, and Hal Mummy is going to send in David Ashby to punt the ball away. And, John, I believe this is the first punt of the night. Yeah, it is, and, and it's, it, this is probably a good decision. I don't mean to, I'm certainly not disagreeing with Hal Mummy's election to punt it here because that's probably percentages of smart. I'm just, he just knows that he's got some, gonna put some pressure on his defense now. Ashby comes in averaging on the air. And now we fake it and go right side and get the first down. Billy Bowe, Billy Bowe, Billy Bowe with the first down and a fake punt. And the Lowndes High School product takes it for the first down and the Blazers are back in business on the fake. <laughs> of course, I'm sitting here saying, do we go for it? Do we kick it? I never thought that we might fake it, but uh, chalk one up for Hal Mummy there. He really played the part well. I looked down at him, and he slammed his script down on the ground when he, when he sent his punting team onto the field. So uh, he knew what he was doing the whole time. Like an actor aiming for the Academy Award. Hal Mummy plays it perfectly, and Billy Poole picks up the necessary yardage. He's going to take it all the way to the 44-yard line on the play. Chris Hatcher throws quickly to Robert Williams on the far side. Williams is going to come back across the field, looking for runner, and he's going to come all the way back across, and he won't make it. He'll be knocked down at the 38-yard line, chasing him all the way over there and knocking him down is Keith Humphrey. Seldom does a player get back across <laughs> unless he has the speed of a Flash Flanders. Now, that's uh, that's not the way that one's designed, and uh, boy, that cost is big because that's about an eight-yard loss, and uh, Robert Williams tried to make something spectacular when probably he should have just uh, taken it straight up the field, but uh, caught it on the right sideline and got tackled on the left sideline all the way across the field. Unfortunately, didn't pick up any yardage. In fact, lost seven yards. Second and 17 for the Blazers. Hatch is in the gun. Blake Duncan's on his right. Three-step drop and look it. Got to come out of the pocket a little bit. He hits, uh, throws a blue darter at the 43-yard line to Calvin Walker. He's only going to pick up five on the play. It'll still be third and 12 yards to go, and the clock's running at 7.35 in the fourth quarter, and the Blazers trailing 24-21 to the University of North Alabama, the number one-ranked team in the nation. I tell you what, you got to give North Alabama credit, their defense. Uh, Bill Hyde, you know, he used to be here on this Blazer staff as defensive coordinator, doing a great job with the secondary. Chris Hatcher really having a hard time finding any lanes to throw in. Hatch is in the gun. Big third down play here. Crowd rises to its feet. Steve Greer in motion to the home side. Hatch takes the snap, looks down the field, throws it over the middle, over Robert Williams' head, but he's able to reach out and grab it, but he's only going to pick up five yards on the play, and it'll be fourth down and eight yards to go for the Blazers. We'll take a timeout and let our stations along the line identify themselves. This is the Blazers Sports Network. Star 105 is WSDI-FM, Quitman Valdosta, Lake Park an order of communication station. And since he didn't get the first down, the, the clock continues to run, and the Blazers are going to go for it on fourth down. Fourth and seven at their own 48-yard line. No mystery here, no shroud of mystery at all. The Blazers want the first down, want the football, want the game, and Hatch is going to call the first time out of the second half, and he'll come over and talk with Hal Mummy. And while he does, we'll take a 60-second lola break. This is the Blazers Sports Network. It's such a pleasant surprise to shop at the Framing Workshop. Hello, this is Carla Penny from the Framing Workshop here to remind you of all the exquisite things we have to offer that you might not think about for a frame shop. We have hand-carved pens and boxes, clocks and journals, gift books, miniature gardens, and the most outstanding collection of photo frames for your tabletops that you'll ever see. Get your Hallusion 3D images here, too. The Framing Workshop at Barclay Square by the Mall. Unless you're a travel professional, you can't always know all there is to know about airfares, seasonal rates, package tours, and other details behind a successful trip. That's why you should see the travel professionals at South Georgia Travel. South Georgia Travel has served the travel needs of our area since 1964, and we're dedicated to offering the quality travel services you deserve. Call 244-2324 or stop by our offices on Baytree Road. It'll be our pleasure to serve you. 
and some UNA fans bring up the chant, UNA, UNA on the far side of the field, and VSU responds, everybody on their feet in the stadium. Fourth and seven. Blazers get a motion man, Robert Williams, to this side. Hatch needs to get a first down. Three-step drop. Looking down the field. Now he throws it, and Robert Williams is going to catch it in the 45. First down, Blazers. First down, Blazers. Oh, Robert Williams, the mean ball, who had earlier, who had earlier really hurt the Blazers. Now he catches the first down, and he's in. Ryan territory, and he's going to stretch out that full frame of his to the 44-yard line. He's going to come up limping. He's going to come off the field. But the Blazers have the football and a first down with 6.08 to play in the fourth quarter. Great job there. Chris Hatcher looking across the middle of the floor has the double clutch. Takes advantage of the great height by Robert Williams because he used every bit of his six foot four frame to go up and catch it and then use that great strength to pull across and, and lay the ball down across the 45 to get the first down. Just by a foot, hatching a deep drop. Slipped a bit, throwing it down the field. Flashes there, does he run under it? Oh no, almost at the three. Flash stretched out his arms at the three, and the Bainbridge, Georgia speedster just about made the catch of the year. Well, boy, we haven't gone up top hardly all the entire night. The only time we did before, we got it intercepted, but that time, the flash running right down the middle of the field on the post pattern, splitting those two free safeties, a great throw, but it was decent coverage, enough to knock the ball away. It'll be second down and 10 yards to go. The ball's sitting on the near side. Hash mark. Lasers headed to the left end of your radio dial, trying to punch in the winning touchdown. 545. Blazers trail 24-21. Hatch is in the gun. Biggest game of his life. Looking, looking, looking. Finds a man. Sean Bender at the 45. Can he shake three? He cannot. He'll be knocked down at the 43-yard line and gets only two on the play. It'll be third and eight. And the man who came up and made the tackle on Fender was Jeff Redcross, the senior defensive end from Huntsville. And boy, we've had one big play after another, and the crowd is on its feet at Cleveland Field, and the Blazers looking at that clock and seeing 519 and counting and a three-point deficit. Oh, my, these are the games you live for, and 9,148 fans are just soaking it up. Second largest crowd in VSU football history. Hatches in the gun. Man on his left, a man on his right. Three-step drop, looking. Right side, now he comes back left, now over the middle. He's got Greer, and Greer got hit as he caught the ball. Greer got really popped as he caught the ball, and a man who came over and delivered the lick of the game was Robert Haynes, and Greer, oh, my, he was looking toward the football, and the football and Haynes arrived at the same time, and Greer takes a tremendous lick at the 28, and nobody's able to hold on to that kind of pass. Oh, boy, whoa, vicious hit there. Steve Greer, the great thing about that, just walked, got straight up, walked back to the huddle, said, I'm okay, but looking ahead, we got another fourth and 10. Whoa, boy. We just converted fourth and long just seconds ago. Now at 4.55 to go in the football game, you're trailing 24-21. We ask them to do it again. On your feet at home, everybody on your feet in Thomasville and Tipton and Madison, Florida and Valdosta, Georgia for the Blazers on fourth and nine and the Gulf South Conference Championship on the line and Hatch is going to look and look and now he's going to be sacked. He's going to be sacked back down at the 45-yard line and the man who came in and made the tackle on Chris Hatcher that time was Israel. Ray Bond, and now Valdosta State University has a player down at the 45-yard line, and North Alabama's going to get the football with 4.48 to play in the game. Yeah, not sure what to have. Just great, great defense by North Alabama. That's all you can say. Chris Hatcher really know where to throw it, and uh, protection finally broke down. We got a blazer hurt, Mike. I'm not sure who it is. Uh, maybe... Well, I'm not. I, I have no idea. It's not. I thought it, may, it might be York Kerensky, but it's not. So uh... while they're attending to him, Hal Mummy's out there. We'll take a 60-second network break. This is the Wiser Sports Network. Prepare yourself for an extraordinary new rotisserie chicken, deeply marinated with herbs and spices, then slowly roasted till golden brown. Is it from KFC? Indeed. The legendary long-lost recipe only at KFC. Taste it and believe. The new Colonel's Rotisserie Gold. At KFC, we do chicken right. Available only at participating KFC restaurants. 
Go into almost any supermarket and you'll be able to find chips, snacks, and magazines. Only trouble is you pay full price for them. But not at Winn-Dixie because we have everyday discounts. All chips are 10% off all the time. Get 10% off all magazines and paperbacks. And check out our discount on school supplies, 20% off every day. Plus get 40% off greeting cards every day at Winn-Dixie, the low price leader. Proud sponsor of the Valdosta State Blazers. Still got a blazer down on the field at the 45-yard line. He's got all kinds of attention down there with 4.48 to go in the football game. On the fourth down play, Hatch looked and looked and looked, but there was nobody home anywhere. Raybon came on. He grabbed him and brought him down. Hatch thought his knee didn't touch, and he tried to scramble out of there, but the official said it did, and it'll be North Alabama football 45 yards away from punching another one into the end zone. John, do you have a word on who the player is? Michael, I think it's Sean Bostic. Uh is the injured player. Uh, he's a 6'3", 268 senior from Forsyth, and uh, he's on the field for quite some time, so uh, let's hope that it's not too serious. We get pulling for the Blazers, and they converted a fourth down play. They went for it on the fake punt. In fact, they had converted two fourth down plays on this drive, but on the third fourth down play, this time North Alabama was there to come with the defense, and they held. Well, you gotta, you got to credit North Alabama with some big plays there. You certainly go back to the third down play uh, where they just had a, a, a what's called a dago, a pancake lick on Steve Greer coming across the middle. And, uh, uh, you know, that's, just, that's the kind of plays that, that the top-ranked team's going to make. They rise up and play on both sides of the ball. So uh, let's hope this Blazer defense can come up with a big stop here. Somehow, some way, we've got to find a way to stop them and get that ball back. He's going to walk off the field under his own power, but Sean Bostic is very wobbly coming off of there. Jim Maddalino with his arm around him, helping him off. Anytime you lose an offensive lineman, it's critical, but uh, it's even more critical when he's your center, and that's what Sean Bostic is. So uh, number 69, Justin Clark, may be in if the Blazers can get the ball back. Of course, Tommy Clark, who was scheduled to start at center this year, was hurt in the preseason and is being redshirted this year. Here's North Alabama. They want to choose the clock. They give it to Rush off the left side. He dives across and gets to the 40-yard line. And there to hit him is Raz Harvey. And there to hit him is Tony Hill. And the Blazers, Jason Jokes is also there. But now they are concerned most about this clock. The Blazers have two timeouts. They can kill the clock twice in the final four minutes and a half. I'll tell you what, Tyrone Rush right there just leaps and hurdles. I mean, this guy reminds you of James Brooks. Back when he played at Warner Robins High School and on at uh, Auburn and then in the pros, just his full speed as soon as he takes that ball and nothing's going to stop him coming through the middle. Five on the play clock and Cody Gross will burn every second of it before the snap. Down to two and now he's going to take it right at one. He goes right side to his fullback and he's going to be stuck at the 40 yard line and the Blazers jam him up. It's going to bring up a third down play. Marcus Johnson there. Shea Williams is there. And also there for the Blazers is Tony Hill is there. And that time they went to Kenyatta Jones. And Jones hasn't cared it that much tonight. But that time he wished he hadn't as he gained maybe a half inch, maybe pushed back a half a yard on the play. It'll be third and five. And the clock's running at 335. And the Blazers with a chance to stop him on third down right here and get the football back. Trailing 21, trailing 24, 21. Here comes the here comes the crowd. They're rising up, supporting this defense. You hear them in the background. Over 9,000 at Cleveland Field. Cody Gross is under the center. Got three backs set behind him. He's going to pitch it to Rush. Rush at the 45. Can he get outside? No, he cannot. Marcus Johnson pushes Rush out of bounds at the 40-yard line, and it'll be fourth down for Bobby Wallace's North Alabama Lions. John, what are they going to do here? Well, I don't think there's any question they'll punt the football, but... Uh... I think the biggest thing about that play is not only did we stop him short, we got him out of bounds. That stops the clock, and that's a, that's, that saves us 25, 30 seconds because North Alabama would probably take in a delay of the game here and run another 25, 30 seconds off. 
Good point. Lee Morris in the punt for North Alabama. Wants a little pooch kick and drive the Blazers, but he's going to kick it pretty good. And it's going to bounce and bounce and bounce, and it's going to work to perfection as they catch it and down it at the four-yard line. We've already seen the Blazers go 96 yards tonight. Now they have three minutes to go 96 yards and take the lead in the football game and win the Gulf South Conference Championship. They have a chance to do that. The task is in front of them. Let's see what Hatch and company have up their sleeves pull out all the tricks, pull out all the stops. This is time to do what you're going to do right here, young John. Yeah, let's, let's uh, also inform you, number 69, Justin Clark is in the ball game, so Sean Bostic, uh, after being injured, does not return. Blazers have three minutes and two timeouts to work with. North Alabama leads the game 24-21. Ball's at the five-yard line. Motion man is Robert Williams to the opposite side. Hatch pumps once, and he looks down the field out of his own end zone. Going to be knocked up in the air and incomplete. 2.54 to go, and clock stops. Yeah, once again, uh, we talked about the defensive ends, those bookends, both of them six foot four in height. Chris Hatch is only five foot ten, so they got up and get a hand there, knock it down. 24-21, second down, 10 yards to go. Blazers 95 yards away from taking a lead in this football game. Dominic Ross is lined up in the end zone. Hatch is under the center. North Alabama jumps a bit but gets back. Hatch with a long snap count. Quickly out right side to Kelvin Walker. Walker's going to be knocked down at the 17-yard line, and that should be a Blazer and is a Blazer first down. Good job little. there. Good, good job of recognition. A pre-snap read by Hatcher. He saw he had Calvin Walker on the right side with a lot of cushion over there on the cornerback, so he just zipped it out there on a quick slant, and he picks up 14 yards. John, the first thing I thought about when he threw it out the right to Calvin was the 90-yard reception, 90-yard touchdown against Central Florida down in the Citrus Bowl. Oh, boy, we'd love to duplicate that. 2.39 to go in the football game. Blazers down three. Hatch with a deep drop. Got to throw it over the middle. Going to be intercepted at the 30, to the 25, to the 20, 15, 10, 5. Touchdown, North Alabama. Oh, my, that's a dagger in the heart right there. That is a dagger that just slashed Blazer fans everywhere right in the heart as Ronald McKinnon picks it off the sophomore from Elba, Alabama and returns it 25 yards for the North Alabama touchdown. 30 points on the board for the visitors, 21 on the board for the home team. And here comes Michael Edwards. Check that Jamie Stoddard is on to kick the extra point. The hold is down, the kick is up, the flag is down, and the kick is good, but there's a flag down on the play, and they're going to bring them all back over there and see what that one's about. John, it looked like Hatch was trying to find somebody, anybody, and the penalty is against the Blazers. It is declined with 2.27 to go in the game, and the Blazers down 31-21. to They got to score 10 points in 2.27. Going to be a tough task here. We'll take a 30-second local break. This is the Blazers Sports Network. This is Bart Bosch. Oftentimes, people get the notion that the only way to get the best deal on a new vehicle is to drive hundreds of miles out of town. Now, at Bosch Holmes Buick GMC Azuzu, we make this place to our customers. We will meet or beat any competitor's price on a new Oldsmobile Buick, GMC truck, or new Azuzu. Now you can be assured without trips to Jacksonville, Tallahassee, or wherever, you'll get the best deal at Bosch Holmes Buick GMC Azuzu on any model, any day, any time. Bosch Holmes Buick GMC Azuzu, North Falasta Road. Chris Hatcher throws his fourth interception. He had only five for the entire year coming in. He was hitting on 70% of his passes. He's thrown three touchdown passes tonight to run his total to 35 for the year. But these four intercepts, that one was a dagger right there. Yeah, it was. Uh, again, drops back, looking down to the left side, trying to hit, look like Calvin Walker on about an 18-yard curl. But uh, again, we've said it uh, numerous times tonight, you gotta give North Alabama credit. That defense, Ronald McKinnon, those linebackers have really been active tonight in pass coverage. Uh, I think I'm surprised that they have covered as well as they have, but they have just done a tremendous job, and McKinnon takes it the distance. Here's North Alabama to kick off. Jamie Stoddard. Going to be a high, little short, end over end, taken at the 30-yard line. And here comes Calvin Walker, 35, 
trying to cut it back inside at the 40. He's going to be tackled at the 41 in North Alabama. Really a lot of trash talking out there now. The man who made the tackle was Thomas Counts, and the Blazers are going to set up shop 59 yards away from easing a little bit closer in this game, down by 10 points now at 31-21. Mike, if we can move it here in a hurry, uh, try to get a touchdown, go for two, then all we need is an onside kick and a field goal to win it. So uh, this thing's not over. we got to hang tough here. Uh, got to find somebody. we got to get a big play from somebody. I like the sound of that. Blazer fans are still standing on their feet. Here's Hatch with the deep drop and looking and looking and looking. He's going to scramble out of there and find his man Steve Greer at midfield. And Greer's going to catch the football right at the first down marker. So Steve Greer with another big catch. And the Blazers are still alive with 2.08 to go. And they say, are they, is it going to be a first down? They're going to stop the clock and bring the chains out to take a look at it there. As John said, it, it's 10 points and a chance for the Blazers to get back in this thing. And it is a first down, now they decide. So the clock runs at two minutes. And the Blazers, Hatch is in the shotgun. Looking out right side, now he's gonna be sacked back at the 40 yard line. They're just teeing off on the young guy right now. And coming in to make the stop that time for North Alabama is Jeff Recross, the defensive tackle. And Hatch is gonna be knocked down at the 40 yard line. It'll bring up a second down and 22 yards to go. Hatch is gonna give the play to Robert Williams. 96 seconds in the football game. Blazers still have two timeouts left. Down by 10 points, 31-21 to the number one team in the nation. Hatch with a deep drop again. He's gonna run out of there. Motion his men around. He's gonna throw it down there. It's gonna be caught by Reggie Walker to 35, to the 30, to the 28, and a flag is down. Could be a face mask on top of it. Could be a face mask on top of it. Let's see. Big play by Reggie Walker. It'll be a first down Blazers. And Blake Duncan says it's against North Alabama. Face mask, that's what it is. It'll be tacked on on top of the play. And Hal Mummy is looking down at his script now, deciding what's going to be the next call. 118 to go. And maybe try to stop this clock after they mark it. Well, they're going to have time to call a play here and try to get the ball into the end zone. The penalty, it's going to be an inadvertent face mask. So it'll only be a five yard penalty and it'll be a first and 10 Blazers at the 23 yard line of North Alabama. Headed to the left end of your radio dial. Balls on the far side hash mark and the Blazers down 10 points. Hal Mummy just screaming at the top of his lungs to Chris Hatcher. I think he wants a particular play in there. Probably one that's different than the script. Here's Hatch in the gun. Blake Duncan on his right, Reggie Walker on his left. Hatch with a three step drop. Looking out left side, he's got Reggie Walker there. It's gonna be intercepted by North Alabama at the three yard line. North Alabama picks off Chris Hatcher for the fifth time tonight. And that will just about do it. And the man who committed that foul deed that time was Ronald McKinnon again. And boy, hasn't he been a thorn in the sides of Blazer fans everywhere. Well, I tell you what, just uh, as I said, these Linebackers getting so involved in pass coverage, it's really surprising. It tells you what kind of athletes they are, but uh, take your hat off to North Alabama. They have uh, they've come in here with the weight of the number one ranking on their shoulders, and they've proved worthy of the task. So uh, uh, it's been a great football game. It certainly has. A classic in every sense of the word. First and 10 for North Alabama at their own two-yard line. And Cody Gross is going to be under the center. He's got his whole backfield lining up in the end zone. He's going to give it up to Satterfield, and Satterfield is going to dive off the right tackle, and he's going to get maybe a yard on the play. And the Blazers, I think, are going to stop the clock in there on the stop for the issue that time. George Parsons is there. John, the Blazers are going to have to just regroup and fly out to Arkansas. Well, they will, and uh, obviously they felt like you win tonight. Uh, you win next week. You're in the playoffs and a lock. Uh, now it's going to be it's going to be questionable. So uh, uh, hopefully people, uh, the committee will take a look at this ball game, see how close this game really was, and uh, uh, with a big victory next week, maybe we can get into the into the dance. Blazers, the best we could be is eight and three, which is a fine record. We got the loss to Central Florida, ranked in the top 20 in one AA ranks. We got the upset loss at West Georgia, which has really come on, John, with another win today. Yeah, they're, they're proving they're a pretty good football team, but uh, unfortunately, I think still that uh, you're going to point to that West Georgia loss as the one that, that might keep us out. 
course, you got an Albany State there, right? They're still undefeated and they're ranked high in the rankings. And you got a Carson Newman there. Yeah, and the you, the you teams ahead of us, yeah, North Alabama, as you said, Hampton is number three in the country. They're undefeated in the southern region, Albany State and Carson Newman. And then the Blazers at 18th. So uh, uh, we'll have to hopefully somebody there can, can lose a game and, and the Blazers could, could move up. Cody Gross is going to be under the center. He's going to hand off left side this time, crashing across the five to the seven-yard line. He gives it to center field again, and the Blazers are going to burn their last time out. That's the last time the Blazers will be able to stop the clock with 49 seconds in the football game and trailing 31 to 21. Well, the Blazers, I think what you what you gotta you gotta tip your hat to them. They haven't quit at all. This defense has played well. They certainly have. North Alabama is going to going to end up more than likely winning this ball game, but uh, they have been in a war, and this Blazer defense and Mike Major, they deserve a lot of credit because they have made some big plays tonight. They didn't do anything we thought they wouldn't do except play a lot better pass defense than I thought they would. They pick off Chris Hatcher five times. Well, you're right. We talked to, uh, you, you know, you talk to people throughout the year. You talk to, we talked to some of the Mississippi College people. Uh, we talked to... Uh, uh, and even the Blazer coaching staff looking at them on film said, you know, this is a great football team, but we feel like they won't play past defense. I mean, we feel like we can certainly uh, find some seams, but uh, they just hadn't been there tonight uh, as evident of the five interceptions. And uh, uh, Chris Hatcher's just had a tough night and uh, the pass rush has been fierce and the linebackers uh, for, for North Alabama have just played tremendous pass defense. North Alabama is going to let that play clock run down now. Chris Hatcher only had five interceptions coming in, and he's equal that total in one game tonight. Cody Gross is under the center. It's going to hand off again to Satterfield. Satterfield's going to take it across the 10 to the 11-yard line. He'll be short of the first down. It'll bring up a fourth down play. But the clock continues to run, and the Blazers cannot stop it again. So they may just line up and run that fourth down play and then let it go over. But with the play clock, they'll have a chance to run it right on down to the very end. North Alabama just standing around now, watching the 25, 24, 23, a very somber crowd at Cleveland Field after being coming in here as the second largest crowd in VSU history, 9,148 fans. Compliments to Bill England and Herb Reinhardt and all the other people who helped make this a, a super night except for the final score on the scoreboard. Five seconds to go in the football game. The play clock runs out. And they're going to throw the flag and mark off the penalty against North Alabama. When they line up again, they will just stand up there, and Cody Gross will be take one snap with three seconds to go, and that will be the football game. North Alabama will remain number one in the nation. They have one more game left to play. That's against West Georgia next week. Uh, West Georgia is coming hard, but I don't think they're coming that hard. No, <laughs> no, I tell you what, uh, because this this North Alabama offense is going to be coming a little bit harder. And I mean, they just. Uh, uh, you know, and the game is in Florence, and I think North Alabama, uh, you know, they'll they'll focus in enough to win that one, and then they'll, being the number one team in the, in the nation, will get a great seed in the playoffs. Cody Gross is going to be under the center for the final time, and he's going to hand off right side, and Satterfield's going to take it to the 10, and the football game is over. And Bobby Wallace and his North Alabama team deserve a lot of credit. They are, I think, the best college football team we've seen this year. They play well on both sides of the football. They know what's necessary. They do what needs to be done. Final score, North Alabama 31, Valdosta State University 21. We'll take a 90-second local break. This is the Blazers Sports Network. This is John with Nigel Diamonds Go, and we mean go. It's time to lay away now for Christmas. We have a large selection of Go watches for just $1.99, and we also have a large group of Solid Go charm bracelets starting for just $49.99. Also, a wide flex herringbone chain, 18 inches in Solid Go for just $39.99. No one beats our prices, quality, and selection. Located in Veldost in the new Walmart shopping center, Lake Park factory stores behind Hardy's in the pink building. This fall, the Framing Workshop has much more in store for everyone. Hello, this is Carla Penny, and all of us invite you in soon to see the fall edition of the Framing Workshop. Come and see our wearable art, T-shirts by Monet, Van Gogh, Raphael, and others, and prints to match for your living room, dorm room, or even your office. 
We do great framing, too, and the new VSU diplomas look exquisite. Fall in this fall to the Framing Workshop at Barclay Square by the Mall. Unless you're a travel professional, you can't always know all there is to know about airfares, seasonal rates, package tours, and other details behind a successful trip. That's why you should see the travel professionals at South Georgia Travel. South Georgia Travel has served the travel needs of our area since 1964, and we're dedicated to offering the quality travel services you deserve. Call 244-2324 or stop by our offices on Bay Tree Road. It'll be our pleasure to serve you. The state falls to 7-3 on the year, 4-2 in Gulf South Conference play. North Alabama raises its record to 9-0 overall and 6-0 against Gulf South Conference opponents. Of course, as you know, both these teams have one game left. The Blazers will fly to Henderson State. That'll be next Saturday afternoon. It'll be an afternoon game. John and I will be with you at 2.30 and then 3 o'clock for the kickoff against Henderson State in Arkadelphia, Arkansas. And the Blazers will be flying again, as we did against Delta State. Of course, North Alabama is going to wind it up, as John said, at home in Florence against the West Georgia College Braves, who won again today. I think they've won like four games in a row, and it all started when they upset the Blazers on a Saturday night in Carrollton, and that again is going to prove to be a thorn in the Blazers' side, and again, may keep the Blazers out of the playoffs. Yeah, I think so, and it's uh, it's disappointing, but uh, the main thing is to go back and regroup, and uh, let's make sure we win next week, and let's Let's force that selection committee to make to have a tough decision to make. Good point. We'd be eight and three. We beat Henderson State, particularly if we beat them convincingly. A chance for the Blazers maybe to sneak in that back door of the national playoffs. We're going to be back here at Cleveland Field. A rapidly departing group of fans here, a fine group of fans who really cheered on the Blazers tonight. We'll be back after this 90-second local break. This is the Blazers Sports Network. This is Bart Bosch. Oftentimes, people get the notion that the only way to get the best deal on a new vehicle is to drive hundreds of miles out of town. 